uh, the World Cup matches from Qatar. So you do keep it right here. That is in about 30 days from now. Let's now turn on to our focus to other issues. And of course, uh, today's speech by President William Ruto was full of many things, you know, and the president touched on, among others, you know, the agriculture sector, um, uh, the transport sector, the housing, security, as well as reforming uh, the security apparatus in this country. Well, joining me now on the set tonight is Sylvester Kasuku. He's a public policy analyst, and he's also uh, the former and the founding managing director or CEO of Lapset, uh, which is his um, uh, pet project. And of course, uh, the president also talked about uh, Lamu Port after it became uh, or the first consignment of live animals were wow. uh, exported to Oman. We shall be discussing this plus more. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Sylvester. Um, well, this was first uh, the, uh, President William Ruto's first uh, public uh, ceremony. Um, so, how do you rate his uh, speech, first of all? Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, very clear that uh, the president was outlining, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the policies and programs that his uh, government is going to pursue. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, he was now making it clearer, defining it, and actually packaging it. And uh, at the same time, unpacking it for Kenyans to understand what he is going to uh, deliver. And of course, the key areas uh, that he touched definitely also meant that he was speaking to uh, the specific beneficiary or, uh, uh, you know, uh, the segments of the population that are meant to uh, benefit this because he, he clearly de I mean, uh, outlined that. Uh, like, if I were to look at issues of... Uh, affordable credit uh, definitely he indicated very clearly that uh, uh, he is looking at uh, how to reduce uh, the, the burden of borrowing particularly for the small scale people or what you call uh, those who borrow from Foleza yeah. and uh, one very interesting thing is that uh, uh, the, the credit reference bureaus were not just affecting even uh, you know uh, people at the lower level but sometimes they were even having misreports uh, like you could go there and uh, you don't owe anything and only to find that uh, maybe they are making reference to uh, some credit that you had taken way back and uh, was already paid, but they were indicating that uh, you have a bad name, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I think they, they really needed to be structured, to be restructured. So that will go well. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at uh, issues of agriculture and particularly food security, uh, this is something that is very emotive, and you really do understand how the cost of Ugali mm -hmm. is uh, hurting Kenyans. Yeah. Uh, looking at the deficit that uh, was suffered in the, during the last year, uh, a deficit of 10 million bags mm -hmm. meant that many parts of this country, or a huge population, was actually going to uh, starve. And the prices therefore uh, rose very high because demand was quite high for very little. Uh, harvest that was available and uh, lowering the cost of inputs is something that is very important in uh, in the agricultural sector the cost of fertilizer being brought down by yeah. more than half mm -hmm. uh, the promise to provide seeds uh, providing agricultural chemicals uh, making better extension services this if done really uh, we should really expect uh, some uh, a lot of improvements number one in production number yep. two in uh, the cost of production, mm -hmm. number three, and even returns that farmers get. And number four, uh, even supporting other sectors of the economy that depend on agricultural production, and for I example, want, and, 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 and I want to interject at that point because, mm -hmm. I mean, look, the issues of um, uh, farm inputs uh, subsidies or subsidizing uh, farm inputs, I mean, it, this is it's not a new concept. Uh, Pres the former uh, the, uh, president, uh, the late um, uh, President Moy, you know, embarked on this where he started uh, subsidizing uh, seeds, he started subsidizing uh, fertilizer as well. Uh, president Moi Kibaki took over, he did the same. President um, Kenyatta did the same, uh, you know, junior. And now Ruto is embarking on the same. Uh, is it effective, really, or is it, are we go getting the concept wrong? Uh, I think. Uh, 
there, there, is, there is a kind of a difference uh, in my view uh, according to the promise he was making mm -hmm. he's showing that uh, it's not just a matter of subsidizing yeah. but for example seeds uh, provision of certified seeds and investing in seed production not just subsidizing mm -hmm. is very important when seeds are not correct the yields are usually affected uh, number two looking at the issue of fertilizer uh, he has talked about uh, a solution of working with the uh, you know neighbors uh, east african regional uh, partners mm -hmm. uh, to establish uh, fertilizer production plants uh, within the region so that we can produce locally and also lower that i think if that works then it will go beyond subsidy but, but uh, of course it's good to remember that we we have um, companies that are producing fertilizer in this country mm -hmm. for example you have uh, one of the largest in east africa uh the yara uh, uh, fertilizer company which is based in in nakuru so how 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 different will uh, the proposed or the the company that he's talked that he talked about be different uh O'Brien, uh my view uh could point to the fact that uh if you look at the production capacity of that particular company, mm -hmm. it can't meet the demands of the market. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when goods are too scarce, the prices go up. Therefore, if you again depend on importation, and we also understand that the global challenges that affected production, particularly, and distribution, uh, I mean, in terms of logistics value chain, uh, have also impacted in terms of increasing the prices, like the war between Russia and Ukraine. Yep. have affected us so if we start to produce and we produce enough what can be uh, supported i mean what can support the economy you know, in terms of supporting agriculture i believe that will lower the cost particularly if there is government interest if there is government investment and if there is government uh, facilitation in terms of incentives that need to support uh, local production of fertilizer that will make it go down i mean look at nigeria the fertilizer costing less than three thousand shillings a bag uh, because uh, people investors local investors like dangote have heavily invested mm -hmm. in uh, fertilizer production in nigeria what we need is actually uh to uh, for the government to support uh, our industrialists and to provide partnerships with industrialists yeah so that we can start to produce fertilizer and looking at the market beyond our borders because if you again you look at economies of scale in terms of consuming what is produced locally beyond the borders of kenya and what can be produced in uganda can still reach us with a better uh, i mean uh, without barriers in terms of tariffs or whatever then that can lower the cost of fertilizer mm -hmm. Yeah, the but, other but, but, but even before you go to you, you move away from the issue of fertilizer. I mean, have we come to the conclusion that um, you know f f uh, subsidizing fertilizer, you know, is going to unlock all the opportunities that we have in the agriculture sector? Because, for example, look, uh, when you look at the post-harvest losses, the account mm -hmm. to the, the account of uh, about uh, uh, between forty and forty-five percent uh, of all local produce, um, especially more so in the maize growing mm -hmm. zones. Mm -hmm. So if we do not address the other challenges, then uh, will, are we going to be addressing the issue of uh, food insecurity in Kenya? Yes, that's where I was going. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, there are other sectors that are connected to agriculture that must equally receive attention. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, industries or agro-processing industries that need to convert what is being produced uh, from the farms uh, in, into higher value. Uh, products that can also have longer shelf lives and that can have a wider markets uh, for consumption and for distribution so that really needs to be worked on uh, because if you have a bumper harvest beyond what you can contain even in the in, in the green stores and uh, beyond what you can consume locally mm -hmm. and beyond what you can find a market for immediately before they go bad then it means that uh, there will be another challenge altogether mm -hmm. and that might also demoralize farmers so i believe that um, what he's talking about uh, supporting industrial development uh, the other day he was talking about supporting uh, the, the, the manufacturers and uh, uh, producers of industrial products and uh, processors uh, i hope that will go into supporting uh, the you know uh, farmers or uh, agricultural businesses so that they do not get affected by lack of market mm -hmm.
Yeah. Uh, I, 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 before I let you go on that issue, um, I want to hear from you. I mean, when you look at the, at the whole, you know, agricultural value chain, you know, there are so many components. Mm -hmm. There is transport, there is labor, there is climate, there is uh, farm input. Mm -hmm. uh, there are brokers in the middle. And uh, have we managed to do a full psychoanalysis of this sector and determined what exactly is ailing the agriculture sector in Kenya? Uh, there are many things that ill this sector. Uh, number one, there is even lack of uh, certain uh, connecting infrastructure to producing areas. Mm -hmm. Like uh, during the rainy seasons, uh, if you look at uh, areas where there is a lot of dairy production, I mean uh, production of milk, you find that milk cannot even reach the factories or the, the, the I mean the processing plants. Mm -hmm. So that is an issue, which means therefore you, uh, there is a need to address um you know uh, what you call connecting infrastructure that uh, connect farmers to uh, you know these points of collection or points of processing and the like that is important the other thing definitely is uh, when we talk about financing of agricultural production uh, even if the cost of fertilizer was low but you cannot access credit that is uh, you know that is equally facilitative of agricultural uh, you know activities in a profitable manner then you still have a challenge so addressing the issue of credit access to credit should mm -hmm. somebody want to borrow uh, to take part in a uh, agricultural production then that will be very important so credit has to be addressed yeah issues of infrastructure have to be addressed issues of markets have to be addressed and uh, it's high time we dealt with um, uh, we might be having small scale producers all over and that will be uh, 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 that will be something that needs to be managed, which therefore means that we need aggregators. Aggregators, not each and every small producer will be running to maybe a processing plant or we be putting up their own processing facilities. But we might need aggregators who actually also uh, not. I don't want to talk about like brokers of, of, of sorts. No, aggregators of of, of, of agricultural produce. There might be small-scale producers who do not have to really run around uh, going law for long distances looking for market. But if we have people who can also invest in aggregation, in aggregating what is produced by small-scale producers, then that can go a long way, again, in supporting uh, local producers at the local level. Can you also tell us, um, you know, what has been the impact of uh, land subdivision in this country and more so in uh, the uh, fertile lands, um, for example, in Kiambu County, in Moranga, in Nyeri, in Transoia, in Kisi. Uh, what impact has this had? Definitely it has affected uh, agriculture, space for agricultural uh, production uh, a great deal. And um, uh, when land is over, subs uh, over, over I mean, uh, is sub uh, subdivided to very minute portions such that you can barely produce even on an acre, on some kind of, uh, you know, crops that you might need even 10 acres for you to be doing good business, then it means you, we start to diminish, uh, you know, uh, uh, returns that farmers get. Or even if you struggle with the little money you have and you are producing on a half an acre, uh, what you need to be, to be meaningfully producing on maybe five acres, mm -hmm. then it means we are also reducing earnings. We are reducing capacity or farmers to produce. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we know that uh, there is a need, therefore, to look for ways of managing land that is meant to be used for agriculture. Yeah. But uh, the other uh, side of uh, agriculture that we have not addressed is actually how to utilize uh, the dry lands or the asal areas for agricultural mm -hmm. production. There is actually uh, dry land agricultural production uh, technologies that are applied if you go to a place like uh, like Iran, you'll find them producing rice. Oh, Israel. In, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in a very arid area. You go to Israel, I mean, they produce. Go to Egypt, they produce. So we need to address agriculture through irrigation. And I think mm -hmm. he did talk about uh, irrigation. And uh, uh, he talked about uh, having about 100 dams built through PPP uh, schemes. Mm -hmm. And uh, government... Being the only investor in dams, therefore, reduce the ability for the government to support uh, irrigation uh, production fully. So water also needs to be produced, I mean, needs to be treated as a resource, as an input, which 
other investors can actually put their money in so that this water become available and those who now need it for agricultural production can actually utilize it. Well. And the government can see how to support those kind of investors. Mm -hmm. And also increasing, uh, like currently, the space for uh, irrigation is about 3 million acres. And he's talking about increasing this space to about 4.5 million acres. So the more we convert uh, agri uh, land within the country in areas that have not been supporting agriculture to uh, turn into agricultural land, then I, I believe we'll be moving in, uh, in the right direction. Let's talk about um, something else that the president talked about, and this is uh, the issue of housing. I know it mm -hmm. has been uh, a challenge where by, you know, the housing demand in this country far mm -hmm. much, uh, or far more outstrip, uh, uh, you know, supply. Uh, the affordable housing, uh, he has talked about rejigging, you know, the affordable housing, mm -hmm. which was... Um, uh, which is a major issue uh, within government. Um, what aspect of um, affordable housing should we address? Uh, definitely, whenever we've been talking about housing, uh, there's been the idea of producing housing which is only maybe bought by those who have, uh, I mean, uh, pockets that can afford. Mm -hmm. And uh, housing inputs are equally critical, just like in agriculture. Housing inputs are critical. We are talking about infrastructure. Yeah. We are talking about land. And the cost of land uh, many times actually drive uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the housing prices to be very high. So if, uh, as already contained in the speech, that the national government partners with the county governments, such that, and the county governments have land, such that the county governments provide land, and the national government bring in resources to make sure that we develop uh, the roads that are needed, uh, we develop sewer, we develop uh, water and electricity supply uh, to all the units that are built, then that will start to bring down the cost of housing. But this is what has been happening exactly with, um, with, 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 the, with the affordable housing plan. Uh, I, 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 I don't think if it has been happening, uh, you know, to, to an extent that it should reach the type of people that are being addressed here. Mm -hmm. uh, those who can actually pay a mortgage of 5,000 shillings a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if those houses are built and you think that they are slightly lower, again, the, 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 the prices of mortgages is very high. Mm -hmm. So getting pension funds to uh, invest in housing, where the government actually defrays the costs that usually drive prices up, is what will bring the cost of housing down. So we are not talking about just low-cost housing. I think the, what the president was talking about is talking about social housing. Yeah. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. So if you address social housing, which is meant to address the masses, then you have to bring down issues of costs down. And you must have schemes that enable people to be able to access this housing uh, beyond uh, the salaried uh, segment of society. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know. I know the concept of um, you know social housing has been very successful in Morocco, and I hope that yeah. um, you know as a government, Even, uh, uh, the, you know the government Libya will be borrowing and leave you know also uh, Libya yeah. and so much. And mm -hmm. and so let's move on to the other issue, the issue of credit. You know, ensuring that more Kenyans have access to credit. The president has been talking about. Um, uh, having a conversation with credit uh, reference bureaus to ensure that uh, 4 million Kenyans who are off the credit markets uh, because of uh, blacklisting mm -hmm. are off that list. How do you think uh, this will have an impact in the credit market? Uh, you know, when this issue of uh, uh, you know, credit reference bureaus uh, has really been uh, you know, a barrier, uh, it was operating that such that even if somebody borrows money whether using uh, mobile platforms and they don't pay straight away they are blacklisted mm -hmm. and even if you looked at some of the loans that were given being given by some of these banks like uh, kcb equity you know uh, among many other banks if a credit reference bureau uh, showed that uh, you are not a good person or do not give you a favorable rating, then mm -hmm. definitely you are not being given a loan, even if you, are, uh, you can actually take that loan and pay. Mm -hmm. But they base their, uh, you know, their intentions to lend or their, their evaluation on the report from the credit reference bureaus. Mm -hmm. So if we move away from blacklisting to giving credit scoring and 
a credit scoring that again also does not uh, become a barrier to borrowing then we uh, that can enable more people to be able to borrow mm -hmm. yeah and, and the, the, the other thing uh, that the president talked about, um, of course, is the, the issue of uh, the Lamu port. I mm -hmm. know uh, this was your pet project. You, you, you are part of the con uh, concept uh, uh, team, and uh, you also have mandated to ensure that the project uh, takes place. And now um, the president talked about uh, the export of the first consignment mm -hmm. of live animals. How did you feel about that? I felt very fulfilled because uh, these were some of the plans that were well articulated mm -hmm. and they were well uh, you know researched and they were well planned and uh, if you looked at even what we looked at uh, in the country we actually drew three uh, livestock corridors one corridor that connects uh, the region around Turkana bringing a segment from Ethiopia around the Lake Turkana area from Uganda from South Sudan coming down uh, through Isiolo, then the segment that comes from Moyale uh, coming down uh, through Marsabit again, connecting uh, along the corridor through Isiolo going to Lamu, then the corridor that comes from uh, Mandera, uh, bringing uh, an aspect of, uh, of like, livestock that maybe might be coming from the side of uh, Somalia, the side of uh, Ethiopia that neighbors that particular region and coming through Wajia Garissa and going to Lamu. Mm -hmm. And with a huge uh, livestock holding area, uh, which is meant to process the livestock, no, yeah. not in terms of slaughtering, mm -hmm. but in terms of making sure that uh, they are, uh, they're, 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 I mean, they are sanitized uh, uh, to make them uh, safer in terms of removing if they have any diseases, they have ticks, they are whatever. They are therefore treated and made to be. Uh, you know, compliance to international market. Yeah. And then now you can take them out through the port of Lamu. And there is a huge potential because this is, livestock is a major resource of a huge part of Kenya, close to uh, over 60%, close to 70% of Kenya's land space is actually supporting livestock production. Mm. And I've not talked about the corridor that comes now from the Narok, Kajiado, going down through Taeta the Taveta, yeah. all the way through Kilifi, also headed to Lamu. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge production zone, and we need to uh, take a bite of the, of the international pie in terms of market share. Very well. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ari, thank you very much. The, for the issue of ICT, evening, of course, we could uh, have talked about it. Uh, oh, but yeah. I <laughs> can see time is not on our end. <laughs> uh, well, as we say, time flies so fast when you're having fun. And great conversation as well. Okay. Asante Sana for finding time to be with us this evening. Thank you Otherwise, very much. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your Mashujadi. Asante Sana. Well, the, have a good night. Thank you.